In this video, I'm going to answer your questions about the Motu Ultralight MK5. This is the audio interface I bought uh, maybe about a year ago as a result of the failure of my Motu Ultralight MK4. Tons of questions came up. I had a huge emotional outburst on the internet and you all responded and I'm just now getting back to you. Thank you for your patience. Ready, set, let's go. What's up everybody, Sky Deep here. I'm a musician, multimedia artist, and all around lover of community. Uh, I love sharing my knowledge. I love hearing from you all. I'm a big fan of YouTube myself. And so this is my way of giving back. Uh, and sometimes I just wanna share my experiences with you because I'm thinking maybe it might help somebody out. Uh, but sometimes, I don't know if you're like me, but uh, sometimes you just got to express your feelings. And boy, did I ever express my feelings when my beloved audio interface failed on me a couple of years back during a firmware update. Now, I had no idea that so many people out there would respond uh in, in such a supportive way, actually, to my outburst, <laughs> uh, there was a snafu, let's call it, with uh, customer service from Motu at that time, but it has since been fixed. And really, this video now is, I just like to follow through with my word. I told you I was going to get back to you, and this is that time where I finally do. Again, thanks for your patience. So, getting into it. Uh, I don't want to go too deep into the story because I've, I've already done that. So please check out the link right above there. Uh, if you want to catch up on what the full story is, but now I think what I'll do is I'll just jump into our first comment. Okay. I, I want to address this because a couple of people have uh, said something like this in my comments, I'm just jumping up in my comments, talking stuff. Okay. Well, all right. That's okay. You know, we can have a conversation. Uh, it, all right. So it says, uh, I never do updates. If it's all working, then why risk it? Well, um, very good question. Actually, I, don't like to do updates. It, it always makes me pretty uncomfortable. Um, and definitely before a gig or before an important job, I don't do it. In fact, I don't usually perform an update until a good few months after everybody else has already tried it out. And once it appears that everybody has calmed down and talking about whatever bugs may have arisen, then I may go ahead and I may install an update. But I will tell you this. I have experienced so many times uh, through various parts of my hardware, especially my synthesizers or drum machines, uh, say like the uh, MPC Live, firmware updates can be super golden sometimes. I mean, they can really improve the functionality of your device um, and especially if your device gets a little bit buggy sometimes, when you read through the notes of the firmware, sometimes you learn that the company has heard a few complaints and they've done something about it. So I think it's a really good sign uh, when a company is actively, occasionally, hopefully not too often, hopefully there's not so many bugs that they need to update the firmware, you know, every month. But if they're updating the firmware, you know, once a year or, or something like that, or twice a year, I think it's worth looking at to see if it's going to improve the functionality of my device. In this case, when I updated my firmware on my Ultralight MK4, that particular update had been available for more than a year already. So I felt it was pretty safe to go ahead and try. All right, I'm going to move on to the next question. Owl Most Dead says, 
Honestly, I think for something like a firmware brick warranty shouldn't play a role. They basically destroyed your equipment, so they should fix or replace it regardless of warranty. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Owl Mosted. I received a lot of very friendly comments like this that, ah, oh, that wasn't cool how customer service did uh, because they basically told me, sorry, it's not, it's not our fault. It, things happen with software. Uh, to which I was just, I was very upset and that's why I had my outburst. Thank you for all of those of you out there who were really feeling me. And um, in the end though, I want to say uh, I got taken care of. Fortunately, uh, through the store that I bought the device in, I had a three-year warranty instead of the regular manufacturer's two-year warranty. So I, I made it just in the nick of time and I was able to send my device in free of charge and get it repaired. Uh, in speaking about that repair of my MK4, I just wanna say that when I did get my equipment back, uh, I'm still using that device um, and it has a few quirks, but it's also getting on in its years. So I can maybe talk about that a little bit later or even maybe in another video. All right, next up. In all hardware products, no matter what technological sector, parts in very, very rare occasions fail to work. It happens to all companies worldwide, no matter what. As far as the turnaround fixing period, each company has its own timeline, and keep in mind that Motu is an international but small company, and during the pandemic and the lockdowns, the timelines go way back. True. Okay, this is from El Mar quite some time ago. I just want to address this because just to be fair, you know, I'm not here to try and defend myself or defend anybody. What happened, happened, and I wasn't happy, and it's okay. I, it's okay. I can, be, I can be angry, I can be upset, and I can express that. That's fine. And also, uh, we can all acknowledge that during the pandemic, times have been hard. Uh, regardless, I still have a firm belief that customer service goes a long way uh, and creates loyal customers. Uh, fortunately, I ended up having a good experience on the tail end of all of this. Now, uh, Elmar asks... Are you satisfied with the sound quality of the Ultralight MK5? Because I saw the other video of yours. Thanks for the video. You're welcome. And thanks for watching. I would say I am very happy with the sound quality of the MK5. See, I thought I was going to end up maybe returning it. I, I needed something to hold me over while my MK4 was being fixed. But then I realized I absolutely needed a backup interface. I, I can't just depend on having just one and then constantly having to tear down and tear down my studio and, and put it back together just when I go on travel gigs and stuff like that. So I decided to keep the MK5 at home and to use for travel gigs. And uh, I keep the MK4 in the studio because I think it's just a bit more fragile and uh, it needs to stay put, it needs to stay in one spot. So now I have that set up in a rack uh, at the studio and I have it extended with the eight at uh, extra eight channels and it's working just fine for me that way. But as for the MK5, uh, the audio quality has been great. I would say the functionality and the internal software also has been easier to work with. Uh, it's, it's just more of a visual interface. And so uh, you don't have to kind of crunch your brain so much to deal with the routing matrix. Although I also loved that. And um, the good news is, is the uh, that Motu has done a lot of updates actually enough updates to the MK5 that my original complaints about it uh, are now gone because there are no blockages there's nothing that is stopping me from doing with the MK5 that of what I had been doing already with the MK4 and let me tell you I really use this device to the fullest 
I mean, it is, uh, this is, a, this is a shot of the software here. I mean, I really go through this whole thing, uh, and I am using sometimes all of the buses. So, uh, like, let's just see, for example, when I, uh, am coming to, like, this is just what you're seeing now. I've muted all of these things because uh, sometimes I have uh, other devices plugged in and I don't want it to come through on this recording. But all these channels that you see muted, like just a couple of shows ago, I was using uh, outputs uh, one through eight completely uh, out of the back of the interface and each one had its own set of routings coming from my DAW uh, and going out into uh, the house system uh, through a DI box. So I had a lot going on. So, I mean, right now you, you don't see all of that. Like this is uh, line mix uh, three and four of what would go out of uh, the three and four on the back. And uh, I have computer USB 1 and 2 there. But I also, if you look here, I have uh, computer USB 3 and 4, 5 and 6, 7 and 8, 9 and 10, uh, as well as uh, control for the headphones. When this device first came out, I was not having access to this many computer USB outs. There was only the loop back. And then, yes, I could have the various monitor mixes, but what the computer USB ex uh, update uh, did for me was make it possible for me to route through my DAW out uh, individually different tracks inside of Ableton, say, through these different uh, monitor or, or ex, you know, line outs out of the interface. So that was really important to me because that was something I was able to do on the MK4. And I was so upset because the MK5 was so much more expensive and supposedly more advanced and more delicious sounding, but I couldn't do all these delicious routings that I was able to do before. So now I can, I'm very happy about that. Um, and I really just have so much control. I, I really like the graphic interface, like just showing you here, let's go to my microphone so you can just kind of see it working. Uh, that should be popping up. Let me just double check. Yes, you can see that. Good, good. Uh, and something I want to point out here, which I think is really cool. Um, if I go to some of the later channels, you see up here, I have this, uh, stereo button so I can change from mono to stereo with these channels just right here. And that is just really, uh, beneficial. I'm pointing that out, not because it's some kind of fabulous feature, but because at first I didn't see it and I had to ask and I really had to dig for some reason, when I was on this screen, like the, the main screen, if I take that stereo switch off, at first, I really did not see these pan uh, sliders, and it took me a while. And then I also didn't know how to link the channels. I didn't realize that I had to go into the effects section in order to make a link. So just pointing that out in case anybody is curious why it looks that way. Um, if I go into these other settings here, most of this page is pretty self-explanatory. Not much has changed here, but when the updates started to happen, this is where all the changes happened. So it used to be that when I was recording into OBS, I would have a problem because the loopback was by default going through nine and 10, but uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, the, the point is, is OBS was, was not able to see nine and 10. Uh, it was only able to see one and two interface uh, inputs from any given place. And so, that was very difficult because I couldn't record computer audio. 
but now I can, uh, just by making a couple of little changes. Uh, the mix USB channels, that's the same thing. The default used to be that you only had the one, uh, but when you click addi additional, then you're able to get to everything. Uh, and I have to say, it has been really useful. Again, here on the uh, inputs and outputs, actually right now I meant to be re uh, recording with you with post effects, but right now you're hearing just the raw microphone. That's because I didn't hit uh, post effects here. It's still pre effects that it's going to the USB host. That's fine because I can always treat the audio later. Uh, in post-production. Yeah, so well, let's get back to some of the other questions. Okay. J Sinar 78 said, good unboxing and review, but sadly the MK5 means a step back in the ultralight range. What is your verdict? Do you prefer the MK4 or the MK5? And I say, I prefer them both. I, I, I mean, obviously time goes on and, you know, we're stepping into the future. And so if I have to choose, I'm going to go with the newer device. I mean, it is, uh, having USB-C capabilities. Uh, it is, um, it, yeah. I mean, it does have the upgrade and audio quality specifics and, um, it's easier to visualize. And so with that in mind, that just makes my life easier and it makes everything sound better. And you still can't beat it. Both of these devices can easily fit in my backpack. And I do travel gigs all the time and it's just the best thing for me because it's not super heavy and I don't have to stress out about it. Um, I will say that with the MK4, I still have a few glitches going on. When they repaired the device, they also removed the ability for me to be able to shut it off uh, ever. Like, I can never just turn it off using the button. I must unplug it or, you know, flip off the power connection. That's the only way. Uh, there was something I ran into with the MK4 where every now and then um, the USB would get interrupted and I would hear like a high squeal sound in the studio and I'd have to hurry up and mute everything. Uh, but I do think that is because of my USB cable connection. I don't think that has anything to do with the manufacturer. With the MK5, I have, n I have not faced any serious problems with it. Um... There has been one time where I've had to kind of like shut it down and then unplug it and all of that and put it back together. And that some for some reason, the gate froze. The gate got stuck. No matter what I did, even when I turned off the gate, um, it still was there on on my my mic one channel. That hasn't happened since uh, that's gone away. But that was a very strange moment especially when I'm on stage getting ready uh, during sound check for a show. So that was a little annoying, but I got through it and now I haven't seen the problem return so far. Let's see. All right, let's move on to the next. Okay. Ah, so these next three are actually kind of similar. So I'm just going to share them with you because this is, seems to be the biggest question that people have been asking. All right. So, uh, Scorpion says, hi. So in MK5, can you do a factory reset if something goes wrong, like it did with your, uh, MK4? Uh, I'll answer that question in a moment. <laughs> okay. Uh, Flamenco ASMR says, thank you for the video. I didn't see you address the question that you raised in your previous vid. Uh, is there a factory reset button to avoid what happened in the MK4? Okay, I, I left y'all hanging, didn't I? I left y'all hanging. All right, so uh, Dean Hartley says, Great review, Sky. I'm curious, does the MK5 have a hardware reset option? I may buy one myself. Uh, this question was just asked today, and I said, you know what? I have to hurry up and make this video. All right. 
Yes, it does. Okay. In the manual, they do actually say uh, that you can do a factory reset uh, and they give you the procedure. Um, I have not had to use it, fortunately, but they, they do provide an option for you to do that. So uh, rest assured, uh, you should be okay there. And also, um, I, I would just say whatever they've done to upgrade the software, I, I really think it's a, it's a, it's a good thing because somehow actually their system has initiated updates for me, uh, almost without me trying. And I would, I would say this is, so, yeah, this is a little bit scary that I even said that out of my mouth right now. So I hope I'm not freaking you out or sounding contradictory, but it's true. Like one time I meant to not update. I didn't want to update right away because I knew that my USB cable was going through a hub instead of directly to my computer. And I thought, better not update the firmware unless I'm directly connected to my computer. So what I did is I did, you know, what people do sometimes when you want to click, a, you know, away from something just to close a window, sometimes you just click on another section of the window and that window will close. Well, in this case, very strangely, oops, in, in this case, very strangely, what happened is, is I, so I, I clicked off, like not close. I didn't click okay, because I wasn't sure about the dialog box. So I just clicked on a different place entirely on the screen and the software just started updating. And that made me very uncomfortable. I mean, I was nervous. Uh, but everything worked out, <laughs> everything worked out and, uh, everything is still working. And I have taken uh, this box on the road with me for various types of gigs and it has been great. All right. So that's pretty much my overview of how I feel about the MK5 and, uh, why I decided to keep it and, how I'm using both the MK4 and the MK5 in my life. And uh, yeah, I am not like having a vendetta against Motu. Like, I, you know, a, a few people in, in some of the comment sections were like, I will never buy from them after hearing, watching this video. And I'm saying, listen, I do not have a relationship with them at all. I bought these devices with my own money. Um, I, I'm not doing any kind of sponsored video for Motu, none of that. Um, this is just me going, these are the devices that I chose to use. Uh, I also received lots of comments of people saying, try this one, try that one. RME is great. Why don't you try this one? I say, those are all fantastic. It just so happens that this is the road I went down and I love the form factor. They're so uh, easy for me to tote around and they have so many inputs and outputs and routing capabilities that it works for me. So, uh, yeah, best wishes for all of you out there and whatever decisions you might be making. Um, if you have received value from this video, then definitely give me a like or give a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know how you're getting on with your devices. Um, I love to hear what you're all up to and what you use because the next time I'm in the market, maybe I'll consider that. So anyway, uh, thanks a lot for tuning in. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next round.